Well, good afternoon uh, and welcome. Uh, on behalf of uh, National Security Advisor Sullivan and myself, uh, today uh, we'll have an opportunity to discuss key priorities, uh, both domestic uh, and global, so that China can better understand our administration's intentions and approach. We'll also discuss our deep concerns with actions by China, including in Xinjiang, Hong Kong, Taiwan, cyber attacks on the United States, economic coercion toward our allies. Each of these actions threaten the rules-based order that maintains global stability. That's why they're not merely internal matters and why we feel an obligation uh, to raise these issues uh, here today. Uh, I said that the United States relationship with China will be competitive where it should be, collaborative where it can be, adversarial where it must be. Uh, our discussions here in Alaska, in Alaska uh, I suspect, will run the gamut. Uh, our intent is to be direct about our concerns, direct about our priorities, with the goal of a more clear-eyed relationship between our countries moving forward. Thank you for being here. Secretary Blinken laid out many of the areas of concern, from economic and military coercion to assaults on basic values, that we'll discuss with you today uh, and in the, hour, in the days ahead. We'll do so frankly, directly, and with clarity. These are the concerns that are on the minds of the American people. But it goes beyond that. We've heard each of these concerns from, from around the world, from our allies and partners and the broader international community during the intensive consultations we've undertaken these last two months. We do not see conf conflict, but we welcome stiff competition and we will always stand up for our principles, for our people, and for our friends. This delegation is here at the invitation of the United States. Well, you can't blame this problem on somebody else. Connecting our two countries. And uh, it is fair to say that... And neither does the Western world. Yes, China's legitimate rights and interests have come under out. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, given, uh, hold, hold on one second, please. Hold on one second. Mr. Director, uh, State Counselor, um, given your extended remarks, permit me please to add uh, just a few of my own before we get down to, to work. And I know Mr. Sullivan may have a few things to say as well. Um, I have to tell you, in my, my short time as Secretary of State, I've spoken to, I think, nearly 100 counterparts uh, from around the world. And I just made uh, my first trip, uh, as I noted, to uh, Japan and South Korea. Uh, I have to tell you, what I'm hearing is very different from what you described. Uh, I'm hearing deep satisfaction that the United States is back, that we're reengaged with our allies and partners. I'm also hearing deep concern about some of the actions your government is taking. Uh, and we'll have an opportunity to discuss those uh, when we get down to work. A confident country 
is able to look hard at its own shortcomings and constantly seek to improve. And that is the secret sauce of America. So we look forward to the conversation today, but I do hope this conversation will be one carried out with confidence on both sides. So it's not lectures or long uh, winding statements. It's the opportunity for us to explain where we're coming from, to hear where you are coming from, and to indicate at bottom what our principles, our priorities, and our long-term strategies are. That's what we hope for in the dialogue that lies ahead. That is the spirit with which we approach this, and we look forward to continuing the discussion today. Thank you, everybody. Uh, well, I think we thought too well of the United States. We thought that the U.S. side will follow the necessary diplomatic protocols. So for China, it was necessary that we make our position clear. So let me say here that in front of the Chinese side, the United States does not have the qualification to say that it wants to speak to China from a position of strength. Now, the U.S. side was not even qualified to say such things even 20 years or 30 years back because this is not the way to deal with the Chinese people. If the United States wants to deal properly with the Chinese side, then let's follow the necessary protocols and uh, do things the right way. Cooperation benefits both sides. In particular, this is the expectation of the people of the world. Well, the American people are certainly a great people, but so are the Chinese people. So had the Chinese people not suffered enough in the past from the foreign countries? Well, time has not been short since China started being encircled by the foreign countries. Well, as long as China's system is right with the wisdom of the Chinese people, there is no way to strangle China. Well, I think this world is very 非常同意这样的一种做法，也就。